Welcome back everybody, continuing on with the Japanese telephones. Today I'm going to show you this uh, Model 600 telephone, the successor of the uh, Type 4 telephone, um, as I uh, showed in one of my previous videos a few weeks ago. You know, you can see that it looks a lot like a Model 500 telephone, and uh, their idea was to uh, modernize the telephone and uh, kind of go along with the numbering as well. So this is the 600, and you know we here in the United States have the uh, Model 500 telephone. So this, specifically, the, the model is called 600A2. The Model 600 was introduced in uh, 1963 by the NTT. And uh, of course, just like the Type 4 telephone and uh, a lot of its models that came before it, made by many manufacturers. For example, this one was made by Iwatsu Electric. You also have Oki Electric, Kanda, and then you, of course, you have NEC. And this telephone, instead of being Bakelite, they introduced a new material for the telephone. It's a more durable material. We have a, a hard vinyl chloride, and uh, it's supposed to withstand, um, you know, slamming up the telephone and, of course, dropping it to uh, reduce shattering of its housing. So all the uh, plastics here, you have the housing, the bezel, and of course the handset and its caps are all that um, vinyl chloride. Uh, the dial bezel is the same material, but it is a uh, inject mold, mold injected. So you have two layers, you have the black layer, and of course you have the uh, injection molding for the numbers so that you can never ever scratch those off. They won't ever be worn out. So if you flip the uh, bezel over, you'll see the white um, on the other side, the uh, reverse side of the dial if you were to open up the telephone. So this telephone was only in black until 1971 when various colors were introduced. Uh, for example, I have one in two-tone gray, and the, that particular one is made by Oki Electric, and it was used in the country of Honduras. I've been meaning to do a video of that, so expect a video in the near future of that telephone. And of course, I also have the successor of the Model 600, the 601, which is uh, a much, much later model. And it was made a lot cheaper than the regular Model 600 telephone as shown here. So, of course, in conjunction with uh, introducing the colors, of this particular telephone, they also introduced the adjustment wheel for the ringers. So this one is 1977, so it does have a, uh, a wheel uh, to adjust the loudness of the ringer. So this telephone, the Model 600, was the first telephone to only use printed circuit boards for its wiring. So they did away with it after the um, the Type 4 telephone, which had traditional wiring to it. So this is a PC board. With the exception of the uh, dial being attached to the housing, as well as the housing attached to the base, everything attached to the uh, base of the telephone, including the ringer and the printed circuit board, are uh, riveted in, so you can't take those out. And all components of the rotary dial are riveted in, just like the model, um, the number nine dial found Western Electric 500s, the components there are riveted together, so you can never take the gears apart. Um, so yeah, um, the earlier dials actually had all uh, metal gears and then they introduced the uh, resin gears for a much quieter, you know, return of the dial. So, along with the 600A2, the 600A1 was also being produced. I have one sitting here on the floor, and I'm going to put this up here on the table as well. I want to apologize for all the dust on here. I had it sitting in the closet, and uh, I've been meaning to do a video of this, and uh, it was kind of a spur of the moment. So, this is the model 600A1, but if you have these together, they look exactly the same. Of course, they are exactly the same. The uh, internal components are the same. This one does not have a uh, ringer adjuster on the bottom, so it's 
most likely an early model, but as a sticker on the bottom, it says 1981. So it's probably refurbished in some point. To tell the difference between the 600A1 and 600A2, the only uh, cosmetic differences is you have the uh, dial center here. 600A1s had the uh, black lines here, uh, and then the 600A2s had the red lines. And the reason they had the 600A1, 600A2 was for technical reasons. Um, the 600A1 had a uh, 10 pulse per second dial, and the 600A2 has a 20 pulse per second dial. So the, the speed of the return on these dials are what we are familiar with. So you got 10 pulses per second here, but the dial on the 600A2 is twice as fast as the 10 pulse per second dial. So it's half the speed. So measuring, you know, the numbers here, this dial, um, dialing it at a zero, is as fast as dialing a number five on the 10 pulse per second dial. Um, I had trouble finding information on the reasons on that, but I'm assuming it was just how their uh, telephone systems worked and whatever it required. So I guess some some central offices required 10 pulse per second dial and then some had 20 pulse per second dials. And they were made at the same time of each other. But you also saw that the earlier models at the 1960s were 681s. So now, correct me if I'm wrong, but I couldn't find very much information on the reasons. But I'm guessing that they were made at the same time of each other, depending on what the uh, central offices required in on their equipment. And you'll notice on both of these telephones, you know, you got the, uh, the, the, the finger wheel here. They kind of have a tinted look to them. You know, so you got this one, it's kind of a bluish purple. This one's a little bit more of a purple, almost a smoky um, I don't know, smoky tint, but that's what they look like. They look like a model 500 basically. So I'm going to put this back on the floor here and I'll show you around on the telephone that we're primarily focusing on the 6082. It's a very, very sleek looking telephone given that it's a black one. This was a very, very common one to see. And of course you had the, the ones in multiple colors. So you see that it has a handset that is a lot like a G, uh, G3 handset. Of course, the lines are a bit different on it and the style is a bit different. And here's a closer look at the dial. You have a numbers only dial. They never did have uh, any letters because, you know, of course they had their, uh, they had the Japanese characters, so they really didn't have a need for that. So you only saw the numbers only over in Japan on their dials. The uh, plungers here are, I'm guessing, a resin, but they are translucent white. And then here's the lines here. I'd say this telephone's more rounded than the Model 500. It's a little bit more bulkier looking too than the 500. I think it's a bit taller in uh, its profile. I'm going to spin the dial for you again. Just that. I'll show you the back of it as well. So you've got your normal uh, carrying handle to carry the telephone around as you're conversing or wherever you need to take it. And you have the bottom here. You have the, that cursive eye there. That's for Iwatsu Electric. And it's 1977, 600A2, and you also have the uh, ringer gesture. It's a wheel. I'll show you on this. The, the A1 here does not have one. And you see uh, February 1981, so I'm thinking it's a refurbish 600A1. Because normally they have the, the, the information engraved or countersunk. I don't know how you call it into the uh, metal part of the base. So yeah, that's the look at the telephone. That's the history of the Model 600 telephone. So what we'll do next is we will do uh, a demonstration of its functionality. So we will be right back.
Okay, we're back. Uh, so let's go ahead and pick up the handset. Uh, I just realized before we do that, um, I forgot to show you, this phone is actually uh, equipped with a plug on it. So I have it down here on the floor. It's got a three-prong plug, but you can see it has two of them turned one way, and then the other one with the green wire attached, it's turned 90 degrees. So that's what their plugs looked like if they were equipped with one. Whatever telephone is still left with these plugs, most of them were. I think uh, they most of them were uh, equipped or you know installed with a uh, junction box. So right, I will pick up the handset here. Style tone. If you hear on both sides. Transmitter as I speak into it. It's very very sensitive one very high quality You can see the change of the light as I speak into it Dial a couple of a few numbers here And if you all had questions about it, um, I tried testing this on a VoIP line. The dial will not register on a, a VoIP line because it's 20 pulse per second. So now what we'll do is uh, we'll ring the telephone. So uh, let's get started. Okay, and while I'm at it, I'm gonna plug the other one in so you can hear it. The 600A1, and I got a modern cord attached to it as well so we can hear that. So I'm just gonna keep it on the floor. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video of the Model 600. More videos are to come, and thank you very much for watching.